Are you in your 30s, 40s, 50s and questioning every decision you've ever made? Well, you might be having a midlife crisis and I'm going to tell you why that's a good thing. So I'm 39 and I think squarely in the middle of a midlife crisis. I cannot tolerate things that were once okay. I'm questioning every decision I've ever made and I just don't have the space for people and activities that don't serve me. Great, right? Midlife crisis. Bring on the bad haircut and the sports car. What? Sorry? Oh, only guys can do that? Great. Can't even have a crisis without stumbling into a gender stereotype. Anyway, any way you measure it, I'm acting out. I will refuse to do some things. You cannot stop me from things that I want to do. And sometimes the delta between the expectations and the reality of my life is so vast that I feel like I've been sleepwalking for the last almost 40 years. I mean, I was supposed to be on Broadway by now and here I am telling my deepest and darkest to an imaginary audience through my iPhone. That's enough to push anybody over the edge. Except when I pause and when I think about it, I'm not actually being pushed over the edge. I'm being pushed deeper into myself and I'm being pushed further towards things that I maybe want. And that's not a bad thing. So maybe this midlife crisis is actually more of an opportunity than it is a crisis at all. I don't know about you, but I spent my 20s in a haze. College, grad school, work, men, parties, it was great. By the end of that decade, I had picked up a husband. In my 30s, I was moving, I was having children, working on my career. Great, but not exactly the time to stop and ask questions like, who am I? Why am I here? What do I really want? I mean, at that stage, I wouldn't even have known how to ask those questions, let alone not answer them with a Madonna quote. Okay, fair point, I might do that now as well. The point is, no matter how rebellious you are, we're all imprinted with the roadmap. School, college, work, marriage, children. And we go around and around the Monopoly board and we collect our salary as we go around and we buy up all the little houses and all the little hotels. And then one day, when all the real estate has been bought and the children are grown and your mom stops calling you because she's become slightly hard of hearing, for the first time in decades, you can actually hear yourself. And I know, it can be terrifying. If you listen carefully, you might hear what your soul really wants. And I'm fairly sure it's not a Maserati and a 21-year-old Ukrainian model. I think the biggest tragedies of anyone's lifetime, aside from the Trump presidency, is not living the life you were meant to lead. So in that sense, maybe it's not a midlife crisis at all. Maybe it's a midlife renaissance. We should stop and question. We should change paths if the one we're on is not fulfilling us. So stop beating yourself up about it and go out and do the work. Get deeper, go out into nature, read some books, hang out with people that make you feel right. And eventually, whether you call it a crisis or whether you call it the dark night of the soul or whether you call it just fucking losing your shit, you will find your way back to who you are. And then this phase has served its purpose. Change is scary as fuck, but you know what's scarier? Repressing your true humanity so that you're numb. Numb is not a worthy human state. You may as well just be dead, but you're not. And another note, while, while this change is really hard on the person that's going through it, it's also really hard on the people around you. But if you're that person, give them space Clamping down and trying to bring them back in a mold is only going to drive them further. So have faith that while they're on this journey, the road will lead back to you. And if it doesn't, then maybe you have some soul work to do as well. All right, that's enough. I'm going to go dye my hair and flirt with the pool boy. Ciao.